Hi everyone, this is Greg Hitt and welcome to Just A Mean Podcast where we chat about the future of making money on the web. Today I have Jackson joining us from Zerpcraft where he's building an NFT plugin for Minecraft. Really good to have you. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for asking me on. Before we get into the project as it is, tell us a bit about yourself. What led you to this kind of crazy crypto verse that we now sure. are building in? <laughs> so I a pretty standard story. I went to college for uh, computer science back starting in 2011 and right around then started seeing some Bitcoin stuff floating around, but really didn't engage too much until years later. Really got into digital assets towards the end of 2018 and actually got gifted some XRP as a Christmas present. And so that's uh, really how I started to investigate. So I, I guess that have... wasn't from like your parents. It was, it was in fact. Yeah. Oh, so OG parents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trendy. I am convinced that digital assets are ruled by middle-aged dads secretly. Interesting. Yeah. I would I, have never said that. <laughs> I think a lot of them saw the, the dot-com bubble and they weren't able to participate decades ago. And mm. after 2017, it's, oh, I have a little bit of disposable income. I can risk on this. So. Yeah, that's true. Cause I, I was in, 2017 i'd probably graduated like a couple of years ago and i'd like right was like, okay i'll put 30 quid in <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it was like, so wow. i've met a handful of they're rocking the dad life but they're, they've got a thing for bitcoin or whatever so i think they're out there they're just not on twitter maybe yeah yeah <laughs> no cool and so that was the first kind of and stuff you had was... exactly yep and i i just have an, an investment philosophy like i'm not going to be invested in anything i don't understand and so it was like okay I, I finally need to do my research and figure out what's going on with crypto and that was just the tipping point so since then i've been uh been pretty obsessed and went from just market research into thinking about what could i build what could i make in the ecosystem and really the, the xrp ledger has been my main focus have you done so, any other projects on it or was the grant kind of the first mm -hmm. opening you saw for doing something cool sure so actually i have an existing minecraft plugin out there in the wild right now it's just called the minecraft xrp tipper and what it does is it enables uh xrpl payments fully enabled through the sum wallet while you're in game in minecraft and oh so that's this cool is... is that a bit like twitter tip bot was for yeah. twitter <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so you can do any sort of player to player payment, or you can tip the server owners directly. And that for me was just a, can I build something against a, a blockchain that works, you know, mm. and bridge it to something I've been involved with Minecraft development playing around since uh, about 2011 as well. So it's an area I'm familiar with. And I just thought, why don't we bridge the two together? Once I got that into a, a V1 state that I was satisfied with right around that time the grants funding round came out. And so I started thinking about how could I make this into a, a business proposal? How could I make this into something that's a little bit more compelling? The thing with the tipper is the Venn diagram between Minecraft server operators and XRP enthusiasts, the cross section is very small. Yeah. So <laughs> while I've had some people who have taken the plug in and, and they've installed it and played around, there's really no incentive for server operators to jump on just a tipper outside of just the novelty of it, crypto enabled payments. And so I, I really was thinking through what would be something compelling that I think server operators would actually install and could actually be profitable for me in my time. And that's ultimately where the, the Zerpcraft project landed. So you looked around the, I guess, Decentraland, stuff like that, and the virtual You're land right. selves that were You're raising right. billions and billions. <laughs> sure. And so actually, yeah, this is where TipBot 2 <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. NFT edition comes in. <laughs> and no complaints if I become the next digital land billionaire, I'll be happy to receive that. But yeah, Decentraland, in fact, the engine team has been playing around with Minecraft NFTs for a couple of years over on mm. Ethereum. And so they're doing some kind of digital NFT items and land representations as well. For me, number one, of course, my knowledge base is mostly on the XRPL. I've done a little bit of playing around with the Ethereum virtual machine, but I just really felt strongly that the XRP ledger, once NFT functionality was introduced, would really be a, a very lean and fast 
and powerful toolkit that I could use just as a solo developer. Whenever you use something that's very general purpose, like the EVM, you can do anything, you can code mm. anything. And it actually becomes a lot more cumbersome for just one person to figure out what do I build? Yeah. How much of it do I put on chain? How much of it do I, I put on the, the game side versus the blockchain side? And the XRPL, because it's designed to be fast, lightweight, and cheap, really simplified my tool set. And I've, I found that to be a, a very good focusing crystal for, okay, what am I really trying to tackle? Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of um, like pickup have you seen so far? Or, or are you waiting for, I guess you're waiting for XLS 20 to really begin? Sure. A lot of social media interest and just the retweets and stuff from the grant yeah. program. And, and that's great to, to boost the platform. I've had people reach out and say, Hey, how can I get involved? I've got somebody who wants to partner along with me. And I would say this is not, it's not going to be the beta phase, but it's going to be phase one, which is I will host an XRP community server, Minecraft server, and oh, cool. we'll have that kind of be the first round of, Hey, we're going to do land sale of some sort and have people jump in and this, the, these will be the, the first slew of Minecraft NFTs minted on the XRP ledger, that, that sort of status. And I had some people who want to get involved with getting that world created and facilitated, setting up mini games and those sorts of things. So people have stuff to do besides just wander around, but that's a little bit of a ways out. Got to get the, got to get the code working first. So XLS 20, here we come. Yeah, I think we're all a bit in the same boat there. No, that sounds really cool. I'd, it'll be interesting to see from, yeah, I guess post-development, like where you can take that because, well, right. as we were just saying, like Decentraland, those kind of guys, they've had massive success, really. Mm -hmm. and, and even though we're in this initial phase, what's the user base of Minecraft? I think if, it's like 300, 400 million month, monthly users. So yeah, it's a different right. thing entirely. And if you can mm -hmm. pick up some steam there, that's, yeah. And, so you, cool. and you may have you may have gone over XLS20 in a recent podcast that I'm not aware of, but just for people listening, like XLS20, what that is to bring a legitimate NFT standard into the XRP Ledger's code base. And so right now there are, are, are a couple of community-driven standards that they work, but they're hacky in how they get to representing something as an NFT and XLS 20 will bring that as like core functionality. It, you mentioned, where can the plugin go? Where can I take it? Obviously people have to adopt it, but XLS 20 really opens up a lot of possibilities because it introduced the idea of royalties where anytime an NFT is transferred between two parties, the original issuer can get a cut. And because of that, there's all sorts of business models that I can think about whenever I want other server owners to install the plugin and start monetizing themselves. The big heart behind all of this is to let server owners be able to profit off of their hard work. They have a little bit of a business that they're running, moderating these servers, keeping it fun for people, keeping people engaged. And how can I take my hard work and maybe earn some sort of royalty, but then they can turn around and sell the land there because there's that dichotomy of you can sell the NFT issuance, but then you can also sell the kind of royalties piece. And there's two income dynamics there. That's really compelling for me from a, a business model and how I might construct that over time. Yeah. There's interesting DeFi applications already being explored with like the NFT stuff. I saw there was a big round raise mm -hmm. recently for NF NFT yield farming and stuff yeah. like that. And yeah, it'd be, uh, yeah, it just blows my mind. Like the metaverse thing is just like a whole nother yeah. level. And I, I, think, I, I think we're totally in the discovery phase and I'm a part yeah. of discovery. There are going to be some ideas, NFT yield farming. Maybe it's going to crash and burn. <laughs> we'll see. But I love that everybody's trying it out, that people are willing to get engaged and see all the different use cases. So that's where the hotness is right now. Yeah, for sure. I think your project like quite res uh, resonates quite well with us because we're going along the similar parallel maybe we're looking at creators and you like ripple just released mm -hmm. their creator fund and it's the same thing like creators put all this time into making a youtube channel building up a, sure. a content library but the amount that they're seeing from the platforms is minimal 
And then right. you think, okay, what can I do alongside this to help them? Okay, let's talk about communities and engaging them and selling virtual land in Minecraft mm -hmm. case or whatever yeah. it is in in that and having that community is I think is sort of the future and it and us using Web3, I think, mm -hmm. manages to push us to the outside as as well and leave the smaller contract goodness in the middle right <laughs> well i gotta say i have mad respect for content creators in general i've been a gamer basically my entire life but getting into college really got into video game modding and um the two premier platforms that i think about whenever i think about video game mods are uh skyrim and minecraft they both have really healthy scenes where people just come in of their own desire and interest mm. and create really interesting extra pieces of gameplay and content on top and oftentimes they do it for completely free and yeah. most of the scene is just because it's a passion project for people there's a, a tiny percentage who can float themselves on patreon or donations and make a living out of it but that's the super rare exception and i just see that blockchain has the ability to bridge into the mod scene and make their efforts lucrative for them in a big way and that's yeah. really what this project is attempting to do is unlock some of that toolkit first for for content creators uh, who are just administrating servers but i think that there's a lot of potential there as well so I, I would love to see more people who are maybe they're software developers, maybe they're going to school for computer science or something like that, and they love playing video games to have an easier entry point. Oh, this is how I can monetize my work and do it in this kind of coexistent space. Yeah, I think it's really exciting as well, because um, like, funny enough, I thought you were going to say Roblox. It was, was oh, that's another one, yeah. I've and never played Roblox, <laughs> hand, hand on heart, never played it. I was, I was thinking, like, you got these kids building yeah. games. They're going to come into sure. this world where Web3 is developed, and we're right. here to hammer, hammer it all together at the moment. Right. And just for these guys coming into it, it's going to be just a different world where they can monetize their mods mm -hmm. in Roblox, Minecraft, Skyrim, that, that's yeah. those sorts of things. Yeah, it's going to be a much different experience. Yeah, and that's a good point. Uh, there is a whole generation that's going to be in, indoctrinated in a sense to web three in a way that is just like discovery for me so minecraft is multi-generational i'm i would been playing since 2011 i think it might have still been in beta at that point but i'm in my late 20s now there are kids who are six seven eight years old who are playing the exact same game and yeah. everyone in between so uh, i like these platforms that it's okay this is multi-generational this has been here a while and so we can build some really interesting stuff on top of it because it's not really going anywhere yeah. uh, anytime soon and i think yeah that kind of stay in power is only going to be amplified by the immutability stuff that we get with right. blockchain and web3 and yep. yeah these things are going to exist forever and maybe you pass it on to your grandkids the map that i built and <laughs> so this is all the right. income i've got from it. <laughs> yes <laughs> yes that's true Here digital this property your, rights this is your property inheritance right exactly. like because uh, no one owns a house anymore because we all live in pods or something <laughs> you you struck on a great point there which is the immutability piece and i think a lot of the blockchain applications this is especially true of ethereum i think is that they try to design everything to be the sort of immutable, persistent until the heat death of the universe type mm. of product. And there's value in that. I'm glad we're exploring it. I think that video games, you're going to find there's a lot of artistry in the dance between what really needs to be on chain, what really needs to be this like permanent immutable record and what is disposable. Because yeah. ultimately at the end of the day, like Minecraft is owned by a central entity, right? Every yep. video game is owned by a centralized entity. And so the de decentralized aspect of this appeal only gets you so far. Mm. I was telling a friend the other day, I think about digital property rights as similarly as possible to actual property rights that I can. And one of, one of the things I think about is if I hold the deed to my house, that's the ownership representation, but if an asteroid hits the earth and destroys the continent of North America, 
I don't own a house anymore. And the reason for that kind of abstract reason is God decided to destroy North America. And in a video game world, your server owners, they're the gods of that world. They can yeah. do whatever they want. There's nothing that an outside blockchain is going to change that. There's nothing that's going to stop Microsoft from changing the game up the way they want. Yeah. Um, and then that's okay. We live in that context where God can destroy the world. But even with that being the case, I can still have the property rights. And I think that's exciting to just think about in a video game universe, there's a correlate and we can have ownership, even if it's not this totally immutable, totally permanent representation. I think also the fact that micropayments go along with Web3, you can make property rights compelling because maybe the barrier for entry is very cheap. Yeah. And it's no big deal to throw away a, a couple of dollars or fractions of a penny to try something out just because it seems like it's fun. And then maybe that grows in value over time to something that has real value to you. But I think the barrier for entry can be very cheap, very small because of the micropayments factor to all this. Yeah. Uh, we've done some work or a fair bit of work with through our grant project for uh, grant for the web, which is uh -huh. interledger protocol, which kind of split out from ripple a while back uh, sure. with Stefan. Yeah. And it's really exciting place, especially in the context of mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> all the stuff we've been talking about. So I'm curious, you, because I see you have done a lot of interaction with the Grant for the Web's folks, w your perception, would something like a video game application fall under Grant for the Web and Web3, or are they thinking a lot more just like browser-driven, online-driven uh, type of interactions? Grant for the Web is so open. I literally interviewed everyone. There was quite a cool one that you might want to check out, which is called Immerse Space. And okay. they got grant funding. I can't quite remember what it's for now because it's a while back. It's episode three or something. Okay. Um, and yeah, they were they were they were building virtual worlds. And the first thing they did with Grant for the Web was build like a chess simulation in this world. Mm -hmm. And I can't quite remember how the payment streaming kind of was built in. Mm -hmm. But yeah, virtual worlds definitely on the on their radar. One of the, and I, that kind of is like bookmark in the back of my brain. Once I get this out into the world, is there a grant for the web engagement that I would want to try and put a fishing line out that direction next? But one of the early kind of, as I was thinking through what are the things I could do for my XRP tipper, the kind of V1 version, I am definitely interested in payment channels and the kind of what mm -hmm. Coil's doing with you're getting paid micropayments every second. I would love to explore what that looks like in a video game. Like maybe you open up a session where you're paying micropayments while you're playing X mini game and it's only geofence to that area. And then once the game's over, you're out, you paid five cents to be yeah. in there. That's really compelling as well. 10,000 10, ideas and you got to hone it down to <laughs> just one, but. Yeah, I think that was a similar thinking to the guys from Immerse Space, like entering virtual worlds with an entry ticket. Maybe that entry mm -hmm. ticket is an NFT or something cool. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you go in and you're paying. I know JS 13K games, Andres, mm -hmm. another guy I chatted to, he was building web monetized enabled games. So yeah. I can, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people I know now and have interacted with more on the XRP developer side of the house, but okay, cool. I'm definitely looking to just also see, oh, who's in the Web3 space, like who's developing and making cool stuff, maybe abstract of XRP. So I need to start digging in a little bit more. Yeah, no, for sure. We'll, uh, we can have a chat after the episode and I'll, I'll uh, put you in touch with people. That'd be great. That'd be yeah. Cool. So wrapping up, yeah, sure. almost there. I think we chatted through the grand vision for the project. Was there anywhere, anything, any other thing that you, places you wanted to take it or it'd be just good to get V1 out and then. <laughs> Definitely get V1 out, get some adoption from there. There's all sorts of extra functionality you can add onto property rights, like mm. leasing, for example, what would that look like? So ideas to explore broader context is going to be what tools can I put into the hands of content creators that give them more 
flexible and straightforward options to monetize. And that's really the overarching kind of question I'm asking myself when I'm developing. And then of course, making sure that it's something that also is worth my time to do. I just really have to be focused on like, what's the most important thing to deliver. Maybe if this blows up, this becomes something that there's a couple more people who are involved. There's active developers besides me, but right now this is just my passion project and see how far I can move it forward. Yeah, no, it's a great place to uh, start. And I think you've got a really interesting use case there that, yeah, I can believe will go far. So yeah, I, I think, hope so. I think that's always a good start. Yeah. <laughs> no, cool. Okay. Yeah. So that's it for today. Thanks everyone for tuning in to uh, Just a Mean Podcast, where we talk about the future of making money on the web. Please do get involved. Give us a like, send us some comments and a review. I'll leave all the links below. You can check out Jackson on uh, Twitter and stuff like that and Zerpcraft as and uh, follow along in the kind of development of it yeah and that's really it please yeah, uh, thanks tell for your having friends, me spread your word and uh, yeah thank you so much jackson <laughs>